Today, the former jailhouse is a museum documenting the history of this infamous island. One of all the objects in the Alcatraz collections, one set of artifacts stands out from the rest. Four makeshift dummy heads. Painstakingly crafted and topped with real human hair, they are strangely lifelike. And they are the centerpiece in a 50-year-old mystery. Did these masks help destroy the reputation of America's most formidable prison? And what became of the men who made them? Spring, 1961. Alcatraz has been America's most secure prison for almost 30 years. Escape is believed to be impossible. But one man thinks he's found a way. Alan Clayton West is serving time on the rock for stealing cars. Four years into his stretch, he's landed a job as a prison janitor. Working on Alcatraz was a privilege. Mr. West's job was to uh, do maintenance inside the cell house. One day, while making his rounds, West makes a discovery that will change the history of Alcatraz forever. Alan West working up above the cell block, looking up at the air vent, realize this may be a way out. West is sure the air shaft leads directly to the prison's roof. He shares his find with three hardened criminals. An armed robber named Frank Morris and two notorious thieves, John and Clarence Anglin. Together, they hatch a plan to do the unthinkable. Escape. Before they can reach the air shaft, they must find a way out of their nine by five foot cells. Built from solid cement blocks, the cell walls are impenetrable, except for one tiny air vent near the floor. This is the actual vent that they escaped from, and then used spoon handles to chip through the concrete to widen this hole large enough for a man to climb through. But getting out of the cell is just the beginning. Next, they must find a way to get off the island. Using a stockpile of prison issue raincoats, they design a raft. They needed a flotation device to get them to San Francisco. 15 to 20 raincoats like this coat that you see here were transported into the cell house. They cut these coats up, sewed them together, glued the seams, and pump their homemade raft up. The plotters hatch a plan to sneak out of their cells at night and construct the raft in a disused part of the prison. But there's a problem. There's no way they can leave their cells without their absence being noticed. There were 12 head counts throughout the day. The correctional officers were counting the convicts even as they slept. The solution they come up with remains one of the most masterful acts of deception in history. It uh, was very ingenious, and they'll do it right underneath the correctional officer's noses. In stolen moments between inspections, using scraps of newspaper, soap, cement, the four plotters start to build fake heads, copying their own features in painstaking detail. Painted faces onto these heads, uh, uh, eyelashes put on the uh, on the on their faces. Clarence Anglin worked in the barber shop and had access to human hair laying on the floor, and it was perfect. At night, when they creep out of Get the cells in. to build the raft, Get they these. leave the dummy heads in their beds to mislead Get the guards. Get these. Get these. And they pull it off. Get these in. The guards. Get these. Get these. Really inner get these. Really inner. Really inner. I am really inner. And on the night of June 11th, the men make their break. They set out their dummy heads one last time. 